Alrighty, so we're back, guys. And we are about to take on Echoes of the Past. Or rather, return to Echoes of the Past. But before we do, we have some deck upgrades to make. So let's get right into it. Yeah, hopefully it's not as bad as trying to stream Quinarium. It shouldn't be. It should be fine. Apparently I was dropping a couple frames there, but it should be all right now. So, uh, let's take a look at our options here. We have we have a good amount of choices to make. Let me, uh, I think I have to change the browser here. Yeah, let me just make sure that's fit to screen here real quick. There we go. All right, so let's take a look here at the options that we've got. Um... Hmm. So we haven't we haven't used Alice yet. We can easily take out these fine clothes. So I would assume that if we can, we want to take out fine clothes and we want to take out deductions. Because these two cards are not the most useful in our deck. Um yeah, I'm also kind of regretting this practice makes perfect too. But that's neither here nor there. Um hmm. Okay, well let's take a look at our let's take a look at our mystic options, our mystic and neutral options. We could let's see. I'm gonna do this by level. Alright. Uh so let's see, four of cups is an option. I remember I think it was last time we streamed uh JP, you had mentioned taking death number thirteen as the tarot card of choice. And uh, part of me wants to either take that or possibly take um, Four of Cups. Those aren't bad options. I'm a little hesitant because they don't have any icons, which kind of makes them not super when you draw them later in the game. Uh, sacrifice is a good option. The card draw is always nice. Yeah. Yeah, boost in intellect is always good. I would agree there. Sacrifice would be good card draw. It would allow us to uh, to pop David Renfield as well. So that's not a bad option. Um, so let's let's keep that in the back of our minds. And let's look at the two experience cards. Um, hmm. We're not really a Recall the Future deck, so that's not really what we're looking for. Oh, that's one of the new cards. Let me see. Yeah, I don't really want to use cards that haven't been released yet. That's a neat. And... Yeah, I can imagine it's really good in Dexter. Yeah, I'm excited to try Dexter out. I got a uh, I got a notice from Asmo Day earlier today, actually, that my copy of Blood of Balshondor finally shipped. So that'll be exciting. If I have time next week, if we finish this campaign, I'll probably build a Dexter deck and play a campaign of the stream's choice. Uh, I have yet to receive a notice about weaver but i i do know that some people have um gotten shipping notices for that let's take a look at our seeker options too so pathfinder is always a good option um i know somebody talked about in the know last time too which mileage may vary on this card in solo It's extensive research. Oh, that's the two clue card. It costs a, a billion. Uh, Atlas is kind of meh. Death 13 doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> Not a huge fan of the synergy or the, the Nambo of the tarot cards plus versatile. So I'm a little skeptical in that regard. But I think other than that, it's probably fine. Um... 
we have four XP to spend. So, so we have options. I could see maybe taking like both copies of Death 13 and then two copies of Sacrifice or at least a copy of Sacrifice. So that could be a decent option. Uh, I don't think there's really much in the neutral cards I want to take. No, don't think I want any of these cards. Maybe a second versatile if we want to be extra funny, but but I don't think we do. Um, hmm. I mean, Pathfinder is just like a generally good card, right? So, so I'm kind of tempted to take Pathfinder and then take. We could take Death Thirteen too. But I think I think I'm gonna go Pathfinder. So let's put in two Pathfinder. Let's take out these fine clothes. We're not gonna need those. So we could let's see. Stargazing's not a great solo card. I don't mind Arcane Studies either. That's not a terrible card. And what else do we have for options? We have two experience left. Yeah, these power selves don't look particularly appealing either. Hmm. I'm leaning towards maybe like one sacrifice, one death 13. That could be pretty good. What do you think about, yeah, what do you think about one sacrifice, one death 13? That could be pretty good. Because drawing, drawing multiple tarot cards sucks. Because <laughs> obviously you can't play the second one and there's no icons on it. So yeah, why don't we go one sacrifice and one death 13. So we'll do that. And then what are we taking out? Are we taking out these deductions? Yeah, exactly. I would I would agree. The two tarot cards late game. Isn't there is one location in this scenario that has two clues, right? Doesn't the secret library have two clues? I think it does, right? So we could take out so deduction's pretty weak. It has three, yeah. So part of me wants to keep deduction for this scenario and perhaps take it out later. We could... I don't really think there's much else we'd take out. Um, I mean, we could take out these practice makes perfects because they've been pretty less than stellar. Mm. Mm, yeah, shortcut's an option too, I guess. These have not, like, practice makes perfect has not been very good in this deck. Admittedly, I've had to try to use it to grab Prophesy, which has been not great. Yeah, I mean, we do have Pathfinder. That is, that is a valid point. Hmm. I mean, so we could. I'm just like, I I always forget that a lot of the seeker practice cards are like level three and up, like I have truth. Yeah. So like, part of me wants to take this out because it's not been super great. So, so I think that's, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Well, let's let's run with this, and let's uh let's see how this does. So I'm gonna copy this, and uh, let's let's get right into the game, shall we? Alrighty, so uh let's quickly load our deck up here. And let's find um. 
gate box. Take this out. And yeah, and I already have a versatile over in my play area, so that should be fine. Okay, so I think everything else is ready to be ready to be set up here, so <clears throat> let me just double check over here. Uh, I'm also gonna quickly copy this now. We can load this in here. Okay, so uh, let me just backtrack. Um, we didn't get Sebastian's information, unfortunately, so we don't get an extra clue. But we uh, we did manage to get three interviewed, so that's really not too bad. And we're not going to have to deal with them because we we decided to burn them all to the ground, of course. All right, so let's take a look at the setup instructions here to choose one of the ground floor, second floor, and third floor locations to remove them. And then we put the following set it, uh, locations into play. We start play in the entry hall, okay, which I'm at. Okay, so let's see. There's exactly one player, no changes are made. I'm gonna set the following cards out of play, which I believe they are. Uh, we did not flee the dinner party. And then we shuffle the rest of the the rest of the cards to make the encounter deck. Okay, so let's just double check the bag here, which I believe is correct. Burning the uh, burning the house to the ground causes us to add two cultists to the bag, which now are a minus two if we fail, place a doom on the nearest enemy. So that's not too bad. It looks like all the tokens are minus two, so that's that's not too bad. So with the addition of the return two, we add a at a basement floor locations, which is kindly done for us. And then there's a second keeper of the oath enemy. And there's additional rules. So for the duration of the scenario, the following additional rule ap applies. Uh, forced, after the investigators advance to act two or act three, you have to spawn a set aside keeper of the oath in any empty historical society location and attach this card to the scenario reference card as a reminder. So Man From Lang and I played through this a couple of months ago and we, we totally forgot about this additional rule, so, so I'm not going to forget it today. Alrighty, so let's just uh, let's, let's give these locations a shuffle here. Well, I will start with the basement. We'll put this one and this one into play, and then we'll remove this one. And then let's shuffle these up. Okay, we'll delete that one. And then we'll do the same thing with the other floors as well. All right, so. It's about a bing, about a boom. Well, that's kind of annoying that you can tell the difference between the new locations. And... Oh, wait, no, because that's a whole new floor. I'm stupid. <laughs> okay, so we begin play in the entry hall, which is a two shroud, zero clue location. It's connected to each other ground floor location, as well as the quiet halls. And then it has an action to resign. You flee, leaving the mysteries of the past of the mysterious cultists. Okay, well, we're probably not going to resign, so... Let's take a look at the act in the agenda deck real quick here. So, uh, we do not add Doom to the agenda during the Mythos phase. And it has a forced effect that says, after one or more clues are placed on an enemy, you flip them to their Doom side. Ugh. I always... This, this can be very swingy, depending on how many enemies you draw. So we'll make sure we shuffle up the encounter deck. And our objective is to find a couple of clues. So... Not too bad. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and uh, store our opening hand here. Let's see what we get. Ah, I still I hate that. <clears throat> I've seen this go... I've seen this one go each and... Yeah. Yeah, it, it really depends on, you know, what your encounter draws are. So let's see, our opening hand is not great. <laughs> We're definitely going to pitch this 
this, this. Uh, do I keep Alice? It's not bad. We don't have the resources to play both of these cards, and I think I'd rather have Pathfinder. Yeah, so let's let's do that, and then let's draw four new cards here. Okay, so we draw Deny Existence, Hawkeye Folding Camera, Perception, and Shortcut. So that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and give this a shuffle. And we took a uh, Mental Trauma from Curtain Call, so... So that is why we have one horror. Okay, so I think our turn is pretty much play a couple assets, move, investigate. So let's let's start with playing shortcut or pathfinder rather. We'll play pathfinder as our first action. Second action, we'll put out our Hawkeye folding camera. And let's take a look at the map here. So we can either go down into the basement, which I've never actually explored the basement. Uh, I'm trying to remember if it's actually worth our time. Um, hmm. Let's... I'm just going to move here with Pathfinder. Alright, so we're at the record office. It's a two shroud, one clue location, and each enemy at this location gets plus one fight, plus one evade. Okay, so... So we used Pathfinder to move in, and then let's go ahead and use our last action here to investigate. And that's going to be uh, committing plus two. That'll be five versus uh, five versus two here. And we draw a cultist, which is a minus two. So we pass. We get to draw a card, which is pretty nice. We draw a Pathfinder. Okay. And we get this clue. Okay. And debating on whether or not I want to play shortcut just to move back. So, hmm. Or do I want to save this for later on? I can always I can always Pathfinder in the following turn. Or Pathfinder out the following turn, so so I'll hold on to the shortcut for now. But let's move right into upkeep here. We'll uh refresh. Oh, and I forgot to uh, do this as well, so we'll go ahead and pop that there. We will draw a card. Draw Unexpected Courage, okay? Gain a resource. And then we'll move right into Mythos phase here. Alright, so we do not add Doom, but we do draw an Encounter card. There it is. Alright, so it spawns at the... Revealed location with the most clues, and after it enters play, you move a clue from the Fanatic's location to it, and then when you defeat it, you take all of its clues. Hmm. Now now I kind of wish I had moved. Damn it. <laughs> well, I guess he's going to end up in the... Hmm. So let's, let's see here. He has 3-2-3 three, three for stats. So we could just leave him here and try to evade him. We have a decent amount of icons to commit. So we could could do that. I think I'm going to do that. I don't think putting him in the entry hall is a... Yeah, but I already discovered the clue, so we should be fine, right? It doesn't like take my clues. So so I think I'm gonna spawn it at my location. And I think my plan is just to try to evade it. Ooh. Welcome last argument first. Uh so yeah, first action's going to be to be to evade this guy. We'll commit this unexpected courage. Debating on whether or not I want to commit one of these cards too to go through three up i don't think so i don't think i need to so we'll go, we'll go two up uh five versus three all right we draw minus one oops so he'll be evaded helpful tip too when you play on tabletop is you can untrigger the snap which will make placing things much easier all right so now that we're whoops now that we're not engaged with anything let's use pathfinder to get out of here 
Uh -huh. All right, so we need we need another clue. Let's let's um I guess let's move here. Whoops, that's my second action. And then we sp spawn in the meeting room. It's a four shroud, one clue location. Has an action to exhaust an ally to discover a clue at this location. And it also has the passageway trait, so that's going to be useful later on. But as far as investigating right now, we don't really have much to aid us in that regard, so, hmm. Maybe we're one, one below the test right now. Alternatively, we could could shortcut back and then use another action to move upward. We could draw a card, maybe draw uh, like a shriveling or something like that in case we get an enemy. We could gain a resource and then go up to three resources and try to play our second Pathfinder. Which I'm not sure is necessary given that we have Gatebox. Hmm. Kind of a tough situation. Four Shroud's a little too high for us to investigate right now. Um, debating on moving. Do I move, chat? Or do I... Or do I do something else? I don't think moving does a whole lot. I'd almost rather spawn an enemy here than anywhere else. <clears throat> yeah, the the eternal question presented by the clash. Um I'm debating on drawing a card here to see if I can get something more useful. So let's let's do that. I don't really want to gain a resource. So let's draw a card as our last action. Oh, we draw a perception. Okay, so not bad. All right, so let's uh, we'll go to enemy phase and then right into upkeep. So this guy will also ready and then we'll also refresh. So we'll draw, draw seeking answers. Okay, that's not bad. That's actually pretty good, right? So we could we could play seeking answers at our location. Well at a connecting location, quote unquote. And then we we could discover the clue at our location because of the way seeking answers is worded. So we could investigate at a two shroud and then get the clue from the four shroud location. So that's not a terrible option. All right, let's move right into mythos phase here. Uh, we don't add doom, right? But we don't add Dune to enemies, right? Yeah, okay. So we just draw an account card. Okay, so we add this to our hand, and when our turn ends, if we did not perform at least one move action, we discard it and take a direct damage in horror. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Uh... Let's, I'm assuming this doesn't count. We'll have to actually take a move action or take a damage in a horror. So let's see here. We're in our investigation phase now. So like I was saying earlier, we could use seeking answers to investigate at our connected location, which is here at a two shroud, use the perception to go up to five, that'd be three up, and then we'd succeed, hopefully, and then be able to discover a clue at a connecting location, which would be our location. So, watch the jank. <laughs> All right, so first action is gonna be to do that. So we'll seek some answers. We'll use Luke's ability to play it at a connecting location, and then we'll commit perception to that investigate test. So that'll be five versus um five versus two okay we draw a cultist which is a minus two so we pass we'll 
discover a clue at a connecting location. Okay, so we have two clues and we get to draw a card here. And we draw a vantage boy, aha! Look at all these janky cards that Luke gets to play. So good. Okay, so we have two clues, so that was our objective. Um, right? I don't have to immediately advance, so I can advance as a fast action. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I did discover the last clue at our location, so we get to add a charge to our Hawkeye folding camera. So now we're rocking a 5-4-2-3 stat line, so that's pretty good. Yeah, man, they ain't got nothing on us. So let's uh, let's take a preview at the uh, at the board here. Uh, hmm. We we're gonna have to spawn one of those enemies, and I, <laughs> which sucks. We're at a passageway location, so that's kind of nice. Um, question to the chat. How does the Wondrous Journey Dream Gate interact with the the Hidden Library location? Is it connected? Because according to this, it says that it's connected to each other revealed location and vice versa. So I am going to assume that it is. I don't think it would need the passageway trait? Or am I crazy? I'd be interested to know how that interacts, so if anyone has the answer to that, let me know. Yeah, I, I'm assuming it's connected, given, especially given the wording that it says it's connected and vice versa, so. But I digress. So we have two actions left. I guess we'll use an action to, or we'll use Pathfinder? Or do I want to wait to use Pathfinder? Oh, right, but the library is revealed, I believe, when you put it into play. Oh, it does, okay. Never mind then, okay. But at the very least, we can we can save ourselves a, at least an action or two by by just using Gatebox to get out of there, so. Uh, okay, so. Hmm. This is a tough situation. It's tough because with this return to, we'd have to spawn a Keeper of the Oath. And those enemies, if I remember correctly, are quite brutal. We do get to spawn at any empty location. So we could buy some time, but... Hmm. Chat, what do you think? Should I advance or should I try to move and find a shriveling? We could spawn it, yeah, we could spawn it in the basement. And then dodge it forever, essentially. Not too sure how much I like that plan, but it's not bad. I'm just debating on whether or not I want to give myself another draw, I guess, is the question. But we have, I think we're okay on options on on doing stuff. So let's, oops, let's spend our two clues in advance. All right, so we find a record kept by one of the historians surrounding this god-awful play of the king in yellow. So for each revealed historical society location, you add a single clue to it. Maximum to its clue value. Okay. So we'll add a clue here. We'll add a clue here. We'll add a clue here. Right? Up to a up to a maximum of its clue value. So does the entry hall get a clue? Or no? Because its clue value is zero. How does that, how does that work? Yeah, for 
each revealed location add a clue to a maximum of its clue value. Because this has a clue value of zero, so I'm gonna, is it safe to assume that you don't spawn a clue here? Or am I crazy? Okay. So we just add two clues there. Okay, so so we advanced and then we have to spawn one of these keeper of the O's. Okay, they're exactly the same. Okay, so let's let's take a look at what this guy does here. Alright, so he's a 533 enemy humanoid cultist while the number of while the number of the current act is greater than the number of the current agenda keeper of the oath gains hunter and he has a forest effect that reads at the end of the enemy phase you find each investigator whose location shares a trait with the keeper of the oath's location and move one clue from each of those investigators to the keeper oh dude that guy is lame sauce that guy's super lame sauce. Wow, that thing sucks. Entry hall is connected to quiet halls. Quiet halls is connected to each other basement location. Hmm. Wow, that thing sucks. So at the end of the enemy phase, you find each investigator whose location shares a trait with its location, and then you move a clue. So basically spawn them in the basement, the shared trait, or basement, first floor, and third floor. Okay. And then just keep to another level. That makes sense. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, let's I guess let's go ahead and use Pathfinder then. We'll move here and then we can spawn him here. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't give you any specific instructions. Yeah, in any empty location, so, okay. So we reveal this location. It's the boiler room, it's a one trad, one clue. After you discover one or more clues at this location, one at a time, draw that many cards from the top of the encounter deck. Aha, well, I can cheat that with this lovely little card. Hmm. Okay, well, let's see here. Oh, shit. I don't think that would have mattered, but I think we passed anyway. Huh, okay, well... So we have, what, two actions left? Yeah. So we could move up to the second floor. You could use an action to move up to the second floor. Maybe use another action to move into one of these locations. Yeah, let's let's move up to the second floor. So we'll enter the quiet halls, which is a three shroud, zero clue. It's connected to each other's second floor location. It has an action that says if each location in play is revealed and there are no clues on it, you place clues on it from the token bank. Okay, so we have one action left. Let's go ahead and... Hmm. Part of me wants to use shortcut to move, but I think I can... I think I can just spare to just move into one of these locations. So let's move here. 
And we find the Historic Room Museum. It's a two shroud, one clue location. And it says, while investigating this location, your intellect cannot be modified. Well, that's kind of lame. Okay, and then let's go ahead and move into enemy phase where this guy will hunt. So he'll move here. I'm assuming this doesn't get revealed because it doesn't have the doesn't have that forced effect. So, so we'll go ahead and move right into upkeep here. Okay, and let's draw. Oh, nice! We draw shriveling, so that's good. That's a good draw. All right, so let's refresh here. Let's mythos phase. We do not add doom, so we don't need to bother with that. Let's draw our encounter card here. We get a maddening do- Ah, oh, no, not scary tea coffee. Ah, oh, no. No, and we take a horror because we have a hidden card in our hand. Oh, lame. All right, fine. So that surges as well. And we draw another. Ay, ay, ay. Peril hidden, add it to your hand. If we did not perform at least one resource action. Ugh. Damn it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I guess it's okay this turn because we actually kind of want to get this get this shriveling down. So I think what I'm gonna do is action resource, action play shriveling. Oops, that should come into play. Four charges on it. Okay. And let's see, so we have one action left. We can't modify our intellect. We could Pathfinder move, move. I don't want to, don't really want to test at this point. Another option is to use Gatebox and Vantage Point. Oh wait, no, that's not an option. We don't have resources. Hmm. I guess I'll path finder here and then we'll last action. Yeah, last action, let's move here. The reading room, okay. Five shroud, one clue. Investigate. If you succeed, instead of discovering clues, choose an enemy with doom on it and take one of that enemy's doom and flip it. Flip it to its glue side and take control of it. That's pretty good. Okay, so that is our turn. We took a resource and a move action, so we don't have to deal with these this turn. These suck. That's way too much damage for us to have to deal with. Alright, so that was our investigation phase. So, enemy phase. Oops. This guy's gonna move up. Now, this guy doesn't move, so we'll go ahead and Move right into upkeep. Draw. Draw Alice Luxley. Okay. Gain a resource. And let's move into Mythos phase here. S hmm. Wow, that guy is brutal. Three health enemies, man. Those are no joke. Alright, so we'll draw. And we get an acolyte. Ugh. Okay. Where do we want to spawn this duder? He has to spawn in an empty location. Uh, I'm kind of thinking here. We could Pathfinder. Man, I really wish we had our weakness right now. Yeah. I've heard rumors about that too, but um. Not sure if that's definitely a thing. Hmm. Where do we want to spawn this guy? We could... Hmm. Tons of options. I gotta say, Gatebox is quite silly in this scenario when you have all the enemies revealing the locations for you. <laughs> Um, hmm. We 
could, but it would take an attack of opportunity, right? And we can't spawn him at our location. Because he has to be at an empty location. Yeah, we could do that too. This isn't a passageway location, so... Yeah, neither of those are passageway locations. I think I'm gonna spawn him here, honestly. I could spawn him here too, but I would buff his attack and I don't really want to do that. So yeah, let's put him here, I guess. Okay, so we have some options. Let's go ahead and move right into our turn here. Oops. We're in investigation phase. We have three actions with our turn. We can can do some stuff. Investigating a five shroud sucks. We don't really have the tools to do that just yet. We only have a four intellect, so. Um, I guess I'll Pathfinder. We need two clues, right? Yeah, okay. So we'll Pathfinder up here. We'll use our first action to move. I'm considering it, yeah. I kind of... So my plan, I think, in terms of that, is to maybe go down into the basement once this guy gets up to the second floor. My, my thinking is that the more locations that we reveal, the more options we have to use Gatebox later on. And then move into the Dream Gate, yeah, so... So first action is going to be to move into the, the quiet halls, the third floor, which has the the same things as this location, just uh, it's on the third floor. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So, so first action was move. I think second action is also going to be to move, and I'm going to take a damage and a horror, I think, this turn. So we find another record office, same deal, two shroud, one clue, and then each enemy at this location gets plus one fight and plus one evade. Yeah, I'm gonna let him like move up to the second floor and then I think what I'm gonna do is use gate box and move all the way back down to the basement. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and investigate here. We're at a four versus two. Uh, I don't think I need to commit anything. We have three, four, five, six, seven cards. Yeah. So let's just go two up here. And we get a zero. Nice. Okay. Bag is being pretty kind to us today, which is refreshing, to say the least. So we'll get that clue. All right. And then, so that was our turn. And we did take a move action. But we did not take a resource action. So we have to discard this from our hand and then take a damage and a horror. All right, so enemy phase, this guy will move up. And then we will move right into upkeep, refresh. <laughs> no, let's, let's not do that. Let's not let the tentacle fest commence. And we draw a storm of spirits for our turn. Okay, gain a resource, go up to two. And we do not add Doom, but we do draw an encounter card. Kind of weird that it tells you what the card is upside down. <laughs> okay, so Revelation. If there is a cultist enemy in play with Doom on it, which there is, move all Doom from each cultist to the current agenda. Uh, this effect may cause the agenda to advance. If there are no cultist enemies with Doom in play, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a cultist enemy and draw it. Okay, well, there is, so... We do have this accolade here. So this gets put here. All right. Move all doom from each cultist to the current agenda. Yeah, okay. So. Alrighty. I'm assuming that's a lot more brutal in multiplayer than it is in solo. 
This card is kind of silly in solo play. <laughs> okay, so that's basically a do nothing uh, mythos. So that's that's fine with us. Uh, okay, so our turn. Do we do we gate box? Assuming we gate box. Just debating on whether or not I want to do anything else first. Um, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. So, so yeah, we will we'll, uh, exhaust this and spend a charge. We will spawn the wondrous journey. Zoop. Okay. And then when we do that, we're going to use vantage point. Uh, so when the uh, Wondrous Journey enters play, we get to give it minus one shroud and snag a clue from any of the other locations. Oops. Uh, so do we want to do this five shroud, this four shroud, this location? I don't think it really matters, right? I guess I would take it from this location. And then we'll use our first action to investigate. Uh, that'll be a zero versus four. All right, I'm gonna draw a cultist. So we get that clue. We get our Hawkeye folding camera fully charged up, which is nice. And we have two clues. Okay, so we can advance. And we're at a very safe spot to advance. So I'm thinking we advance. Because it's two clues, yeah. So yeah, let's let's do that. Okay, so we advance. So for each revealed historical society location, we add a clue to it up to its maximum clue value. Okay, that's fine with us. Uh so we put that clue back there, we put a clue up here, and I believe that's it. <laughs> Do it. Do it! Okay, so I think that's that's it as far as clues go. It looks like every other location has its maximum clues on it, so. Okay, so we've done that, and then we choose us to take control of Mr. Peabody. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. And then we put the set aside hidden library location into play. So let's, let's just draw this for now. And then I guess we'll put that there. So while an enemy is moving, the hidden uh, the hidden library gains the passageway trait. So so enemies can find us in the hidden library. Um So we spent our first action to move. We have Mr. Peabody, which we can use him as an action to ex to choose a location and give it the passageway trait. But we're Luke, so we don't really need to uh, we don't need to meddle in that nonsense. So let's use Pathfinder to go, I guess, here, right? And then we can use an action to move. Because we're already in a passageway location. No, oh, no, we have to. Um, we have to give the library the passageway trait. So we'll do that as our second action, and then we can. I guess it doesn't really matter, right? Doesn't. Mm, debating on whether or not I want to shortcut and investigate this turn. I don't think so. So let's just let's just move as normal. So we'll move here. Okay. And then we need three clues at the hidden library. Okay. So pretty easy. Four shroud, three clues, two victory points, and then the same text as its unrevealed side of that while an enemy is moving, this gains the passageway trait. So that's not too bad. Okay, so 
that was our turn. So let's go ahead and move right into uh, enemy phase here. Okay, so this guy will move here. So there's no passageways up here, so. All right, so that's that. And then we get to go into upkeep. Oh, Mr. Peabody will ready our gate box and our Pathfinder will ready. We'll get our actions back. We'll draw a card. And we draw a Prophesy. <laughs> this card is... Whoo, man, is that real useful right now. All right, so let's gain a resource. We'll go up to two. Mythos phase, just making sure that I didn't miss any doom or anything like that. It doesn't look like I did. We'll draw a card. <laughs> we draw a fanatic. All right, so it spawns at our location. It takes control of one of the clues. So that's really quite obnoxious. Which actually gets turned into a doom. So that sucks. That was a, that was a poopy draw. That's okay. All right. Well, at least we can deal with him. We have five, uh, five willpower and a shriveling, so I'm not too worried. We're just uh, annoying that he takes one of the clues. I'm pretty sure he flips it to a doom because of the yeah. Place down an enemy, flip it to its doom. Yep. So that sucks. Uh. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to beat him up. So let's. Let's do that. So first action, we'll use Shriveling. Um, that'll be five versus three base. I will, five versus three. There really isn't a lot of, um, there isn't a lot of reason to, to commit anything, so. Yeah. So yeah, we'll just we'll just test two up. Okay. And we draw a skull, which is a minus one. But we do take a horror from shriveling. So thank you, Mr. Peabody, sir. This guy will be defeated. Okay. Again, still very unfortunate that we uh that we lost a clue there. So we'll, we'll go ahead and investigate. Uh, we're 4v4 currently, so I'm going to commit Alice. I don't think we're going to have time to play her. So we'll commit Alice and we'll commit Prophesy. That seems fine. Okay, so that'll put us two up. And let's see what we get. We get another skull. Okay, so that is currently a zero because there is no enemies with doom in play. So, so very cool. So we'll get one of these clues. Okay, and <laughs> man, if we draw another vantage point, that'd be sweet. But gate box pretty much trivializes um, this scenario. This card is so dumb. I gotta say, that card is really good. <laughs> okay, so we have one action left. I don't really have cards to commit for another investigate. Hmm. So what do we do? Do we draw? Oh, dude, yeah, I didn't... Yeah, he especially does Oath very well. <clears throat> yeah, we'll see how Phantom goes. I, I... I know there are ways that he could do very well in that scenario, but if we... If we end up going with too much conviction, that could... That could put a damper in our plans a little bit. So we have one action left, chat. Um, what do we... What are we doing? If we move, we don't take a damage in a horror. Hmm. I mean, we have all the options in the world, really. We could gate box 
to our location. A pallid mask is brutal, I think. The last time I played pallid mask, I got stuck, <laughs> which was awful. I got stuck in that narrow shaft and it took all of my clues and it was just a bad time. <laughs> okay, but with our last action, I don't want to draw. That seems okay. Yeah, let's just draw a card here. I'm okay with taking a damage in a horror, so. Ha! You think you're. F Ooh, look at that! Looky, looky. So that was our last action, was to draw a card. Do we play the working a hunch? I think we do. I think it's worth it. So before we uh, before we move into enemy phase, we'll we'll spend two resources to grab one of these clues. And shbada bing, a shbada boom, because I don't want enemies taking those clues if if we can avoid it. Um, hmm. Another option that we have too is to use gate box and then just like go into another location, but I don't don't think it'll be necessary so let's uh let's end our turn and then we didn't take a move action so we'll have to take a damage and a horror okay and then enemy phase this guy's gonna move here and then we will go to upkeep okay we'll draw a card uh we draw our weakness okay all right, so we put Pointless Reality into play, and then we have to move to it. That's unfortunate. Okay, well, that sucks. Oops. Okay, that's too bad. I mean, it's not the end of the world, because we, we already wanted to do stuff anyway. But taking two horror is uh, not great, so. So that's too bad. But it is what it is. We can afford to take two horror. I'm not too concerned about it, so so we'll uh, we'll move to Mythos phase. We don't add a doom, but we do draw an encounter card, and we draw a mysterious chanting. Ugh. Place two doom on the nearest cultist enemy. If there are no cultist enemies. Search the encounter deck and discard pile for a cultist and draw. Okay, so uh, how does this work? <laughs> um. Huh. I'm not connected to any location, so I don't know if any of these cultists are the nearest cultist. Um, do I get to just pick? I would assume so, right? They're all equally distant. So I'd assume I just get to pick, right? So I guess we'll just put two doom here. I mean, I don't think it really matters, honestly, because we'll advance next turn, which is fine. So, so yeah, okay. All right, well, let's uh, let's just move right into our investigation phase. Okay, so we have three actions to kind of prep ourselves. Oh, I didn't gain a resource. Should have gained a resource. Uh, okay, so three actions to prep. We're not going to investigate. I don't think we have the time to investigate. It's not really worth it. We could... We could gain two resources. Pathfinder. We could draw, draw. Resource. We have a lot of options. I think, I think I'm going to use one action to draw. See what we get. Get an enraptured, okay. It's a pretty decent draw. Let's... We have five cards in hand. Let's use another action to draw. Draw Prophesy, okay. So this is actually an unexpected courage for once. And we're not... I'm not really equipped to investigate, so... Depending on a resource or a card. Um, hmm. 
resource or a card. Hmm. Resource or card, chat? Resource or card? Hmm. Resource or card? I'm going to take a resource. That's going to be my last action. Okay. So, end of our turn. We have to get out of here. So at the end of the investigation phase, we set it aside, out of play. And then we get to move to any revealed location and take two horror. I'm going to move here. Yeah. Uh, actually, let's move here. Could move here too. I don't think that's worth it. Yeah, let's let's just move here. Actually, yeah, let's let's go here. Okay, so so that's the end of the investigation phase. We'll take two horror, and then enemy phase. That guy will move towards us. Seems a little counterproductive, but that's fine with me. Okay, so that's that, and then we'll move into upkeep. We'll, we'll draw. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Dude, this card has been really stellar for us. Gotta say. Gain a resource, and then let's get our actions back and move into Mythos phase. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I didn't really need a card for anything either, so... Oh, I've got this, like, frog in my throat that just won't go away today. Alright, let's draw our encounter card. Oh, no. Before we draw our encounter card, we have to, um... I apologize. We have to advance. Alright, there's three doom. Ah! Cameras are hard. One, two, and three. Okay. So we advance. Yeah, okay. So we basically just shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. That's fine. Okay. Oh, and I was supposed to... God damn it. <laughs> we'll just do this now. Uh, we get to spawn him in any location, so we'll spawn him here, I guess. I was supposed to... God damn it. I was supposed to do this last time when we advanced. Uh, That's fine, though. Doesn't really matter. We're Luke. Kind of, kind of a walk, walk in the park. So, okay. So I was supposed to do that. I apologize, chat. I know I'm cheating. So we'll give that a shuffle, and then let's draw our encounter card. Mm, gross. Yeah, this guy sucks. So at the end of the mythos phase, he's gonna get a doom. And then where do we want to put him? He gets put in any empty location. So, I'm going to assume we put him here? Yeah. I don't think it matters. It doesn't matter because we're just going to do some broken nonsense anyway, so, okay. Let's, let's go to investigation phase. Uh, turn's pretty simple, I think. We'll use gatebox. We will do the old gate box vantage point combo. Yoink. We'll grab, I guess, this clue from this five shroud location. Okay. And then first action is going to be to investigate 0v4. And I guess we'll also commit this in Raptured. All right, we get a minus two. We get to place a charge on our gate box and get a clue. Link, go up to three clues, and we can Pathfinder move here in advance. Is it worth it to try to stick around for the for the Oathkeeper? What do you think, Chad? Is it worth it? Is it worth the possible or potential to experience? 
I don't really think so. The tattered cloak is also not particularly compelling for us. Hmm. What do you think, chat? I think we just advance and then we can play the fun scenario. So So let's uh yeah, let's do that. All right. So we are at the hidden library and we're going to go ahead and uh, spend our three clues. Oops. One, two, three, and bada bing, bada boom. Bam. Okay. So So we find all the stuff that we need to find. And we get to choose resolution one or resolution two. Uh, the black onx. Uh, do we take it or do we leave it behind? Yeah, do we take the onx clasp or do we leave it behind? Let's see. Knowing Luke, what would what do you guys think Luke would do? Would he take it or would he not take it? I don't, even, I don't even remember what it does. I don't think I ever take it. Yeah, I wouldn't take that. Screw that. <laughs> I, I do know it. We didn't do it when we advanced, no. So like, this guy technically would have probably moved a couple ways like he would have spawned here and then we would have put him down here it was like very very irrelevant like yeah it was a misplay but i don't think it was very relevant so so i think i'm going to just leave the onks behind uh so that's resolution two okay so let's see here so we get resolution two, okay. And let's see, so in our campaign, we mark one doubt, okay. Each investigator earns two experience and then we remove all of the cultists from the bag and add two tablets, okay. Oops, uh, or I have to like go up here. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think that's it for this scenario. Looks like it. Alrighty, so, um, yeah. Alrighty, so, not the most exciting scenario in the world. I did, I did, even though I said I wasn't going to, I messed up uh, not spawning that second keeper on Act 3, but I really don't think it would have mattered. There's no way he would have caught up to us anyway. I mean, Gatebox just completely breaks that scenario in half, so. <clears throat> As I feel like it's going to break a lot of this campaign in general, so. So yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, so stay tuned, we'll be back in a few minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and set up, um, we're gonna set up the return to the unspeakable oath and we'll be back in probably about five or 10 minutes, so stay tuned. <laughs>